Greetings and welcome to a new video. In this video I would like to discuss the modeling of a DC motor and also how we can control a DC motor for position and also for velocity control systems. So let's look at the outline for this video. We will first start on part one about the modeling. So I will discuss that step by step. First I will give you a general introduction and then go to multiple domain system which is an electromechanical system and also talk about briefly the modes of operation and also the phenomenon electromagnetism which is the Faraday's law and also the Lorentz force law then we move on to the second topic which is about the equivalent circuit so we will use circuit elements to the model our DC motor we will look at field current control the armature current control and also give you a summary of these discussions so far. In part two, I would like to discuss the controller design, specifically for the position and the velocity control. In part three, we'll focus specifically on the simulation results using the discussion we have for the modeling and also for the control. So the position and the velocity. So let's go to part one about the Introduction first. So the multi-domain system, it's an electromechanical system. So if you talk about a motor, can be an AC motor. In this case, we specifically discuss a DC motor. We have an interaction between an electrical system and a mechanical system by coupling using a magnetic field. So electrical system and a mechanical system. That is, we have two systems, two different systems, different domains, and they are coupled by a magnetic field and this coupling is done by a magnetic field could be also also by a different coupling in this case it is magnetic field and the motors operation we have two modes in this case because it is a machine in this case we specifically talk about a dc machine you can apply an electric power and you will get a mechanical power out that is a motor mode so you put in energy electrical energy or electrical power and you will get mechanical power out the reverse is called generator mode so you apply or you apply a mechanical power so you have something that is rotating and then you will get electrical power out that is a generator mode so again we get from the motor mode from electrical energy or electrical power you get mechanical energy and for generator mode you get the reverse now we have two electromagnetic phenomena that are important when we talk about motors in this case specifically dc motors the first one is the voltage induced in a conductor if a conductor is moved in a magnetic field and that is called induced voltage or it's also called the back EMF and this is actually Faraday's law from physics the second one is current carrying uh, conductor that's placed in a magnetic field so we have a wire or a conductor it has a current through it and it is placed in a magnetic field and that experiences a me mechanical force and that is called a Lorentz force that's the second one Now this is a general diagram to also illustrate again the coupling and also the conversion from the electrical domain to the mechanical domain what you see is the voltage and the current will be multiplied that will produce the power in the electrical domain that will get you to the torque and the speed in a mechanical domain if you go from this to the left or the right side the reverses you apply the torque and the speed together the product of that will be the mechanical power and that will go through a electrical domain so from left to right motor mode from right to left generator mode okay now we continue with looking at this in a different way this is a motor that is now in a motor mode you apply here electrical signal or electrical energy or power and you will get the mechanical power out and this is the reverse so you can see that also in a different pictorial view motor mode and the generator mode 
Now let's first also uh, continue with that phenomena, two phenomena we have discussed, that is the voltage induced in a conductor and also the current carrying conductor plays in a magnetic field. These are very important uh, phenomena. The first one is the Faraday's law, which is very important, it actually runs our economy, uh, economy actually if I talk about this like Walter Lewin. Because if I have a wire here, which is which is connected to, let's say, a, a current meter, and I place a magnet here and I move it towards it, if I do, the, of course, the movement up, then the current will flow in that direction, and that is calculated using Lenz law and also Faraday's law. If I go down, the current will go in the opposite direction. And if I do, don't, don't do anything, so no movement, you don't see any current flow. So that means actually the following, in order to have the current flow here, so inducing the current, you need to move, so there must be some change in your magnetic field. And that is actually shown here as the change in the flux, which is related to the magnetic field. And that is the induced voltage minus the number of loops actually here. So you can have one loop or 1000 loops, so that's the number n. That can be also written in this form, so the flux is equal to the B times the A, so the dot product of the magnetic flux density and the area. And if you assume that the area is not a vector, then you will get this expression. You can see again the changing magnetic field will produce the induced voltage. And it's also called back EMF. And the values are shown here, the parameters for this formula. Now the Lorentz force is also the important part in our operation of the DC motor. What you have is the following, you have a magnetic field here in this direction, it's a uniform. And there is also a charge here, which is moving in that direction. It can be charged positively, protons for example, it can be also negatively charged like an electron. If I assume that is a, let's say an electron, it can be moving that direction, but the current will be always in the opposite direction, that is just the convention. And then the Lorentz force will be in that direction. So that is by using left or right hand rule you prefer. You can look it up actually, it's straightforward. If this is the direction of the electron, that will be this, the current direction. And then you will get the B and the F in this orientation. So if I reverse the current, you also reverse the force that will be going down. Or you re reverse the direction of the B, you will also reverse the force if you keep, of course, this direction for the speed or the velocity of this charged element. That can be written in a mathematical form like this. The Q is just the charge. It can be anything, of course. It can be also another element. The velocity is a vector. And also we have the B again, the magnetic flux density. This can be written in this form if I just look at the magnitude of this B and a V and also as consider this theta between those two values. Or you can write down the Lorentz force in a different way, which has the length of that wire and also the I, which is the current. Okay, now these are the um, parameters for this formula. Now let's now look at the equivalent circuit because that is really where we are heading. And we will now talk about the separately excited DC motor because we have several uh, configurations of the DC motor like the series, the shunt and also others. So I will specifically talk about the separately excited DC motor that is shown here. This is the complete uh, model uh, of the DC motor using separately excited format. So we have the field circuit and we have the armature circuit. So the field circuit is composed of a field inductance and a field resistance. An armature is also composed of a field, uh, I mean the armature inductance and armature resistance. And there's also uh, the part that is actually rotating, so the conversion of the electrical domain to the magnetic domain. And this is the applied voltage at the armature and this is the applied voltage at the field. Now by applying a voltage uh, uh, between the field terminals, you create actually a flux and that flux will then cause the movement of this rotor. And this is a model of a load 
and it has some mass and some configurations and geometry and we have also modeled here the friction in this system now the rotor here will turn in this direction so this is the magnetic or i mean the motor uh, um, displacement there's also the torque we see also the for the motors but the load will be of course in the opposite direction so it will fight back and this is then the moment of inertia of your load now if i now want to set up the equation for this one how do i start now let's see how it's composed again that we have a field circuit and an armature circuit these are the components field voltage field current field resistance and field inductance similar to armature current actually armature circuit but in addition we have the uh, the back emf here or the induced voltage by Faraday's law we have also the motor torque and also the motor angular displacement for the load we have two things we have the inertia and also the friction but also the torque which is in the opposite direction of that more torque okay that's for the separately excited dc motor model using this circuit now let's continue and then talk a little bit more in detail about that flux that flux which is produced by this field circuit is given by this expression field magnetic flux is given by in time as a function of time is kf which is just a constant times that current which is flown here so this is the field current now let's number this as equation number one now the developed torque is then given by this expression which is the k1 again a constant multiplied by this flux magnetic flux times the armature current so we have actually two parameters that will be multiplied and a constant will produce that torque here for the motor now if i substitute equation number one in here for the magnetic flux the red one i will get this expression now what you see here the following equation number two it's clear that this is a non-linear expression for the developed torque. Why? Because we have both the field current and also the armature current as a function of time multiplied. So it is not just one of them. And that means that this is a non-linear expression, non-linear function. So non-linear functions can be quite complicated. So what we most of do is for a linear system, we need to make one of the currents constants that is just one of the options so time independent so you can say i will keep the field current constant and then just focus on the or do the control or do the operation using armature current change or the reverse so it can be done so we can now have a constant armature current so we can keep this constant and then control the operation just by the field current or you can do it the reverse you can have the constant field current and do the armature current control of this dc motor now in the first case if you have a field current control so the armature current is the constant then you will have this expression so the ia this as a function of time will be just an ia so just the dc current so no time dependency and you will have this expression now then you can combine the k1 kf and ia together by this constant which is then kmf that f is just to specify this is the field current control so three parameters multiplied will be this one parameter and now we have our expression for the field current control about the torque the similar can be done here the now the field current is constant and the armature current is changing and then we have this expression now kma specifically for the armature and we have this expression okay there are similar expressions just a difference which one is a constant and which is still changing okay now find our usual loss transform here but of course assuming initial conditions are zero i will get this just the laplace transform of this part and also this part okay i will use this later and also with the pulse transform of this part, I will have this expression. Okay. Now let's continue and look first the field current controlled DC motor. It means constant 
armature current so we have a dc current flowing actually in this part now this was the formula we have found using Laplace transfer and this is actually also the analysis before that so we have a tm and these were the uh, parameters and this was equation number three now if i now move on and also look at the field voltage current relationship using kirchhoff voltage law i can say this voltage as a function of time is equal to that voltage across the inductor plus the voltage across the resistor just kirchhoff voltage law voltage loop straightforward now the voltage across the inductor is given by its inductance times the time derivative of the current flowing through it this is given here now if i also do or apply the laplace transform on this expression assuming the initial conditions are zero you will get this so you will get the first derivative will be an s and everything we will transform in capital letters with an s parameter instead of the t the time now you can write this in this form because you have rf plus lfs in the parentheses and everything has an if as a parameter outside the parentheses now let's call this now equation number four now moving on and then rewrite this or express the current field current as a function of the rest of the parameters you will get this expression which is then equation number five now this is an ex uh, expression i need because i can then substitute that in equation number three here now first discuss the tor torque balance because the torque balance says the torque applied or developed by the motor will go of course to our uh, load but also i will lose something to the disturbance or some other uh, external effect torque and this will be then equation number six but there is some note here disturbance torque can be ignored in most cases but must be considered in cases where for example we have large wind flow outside that is of course a special case if you don't have this then you can say tm is equal to tl so the load torque will be equal to the motor torque in magnitude load torque itself is composed of the uh, the parameter of this inertia of this load and also the friction so there are two components which will make up that load torque so the motor inertia of the load times the second derivative of that motion so the uh, theta l plus the friction coefficient times the first derivative of that load angular displacement now if i also take a plus transform of this part you will get this expression again similar you transform everything which is t and s and do the first and the second derivative s and an s squared respectively now this can be also uh, simplified in, or rewritten in this form and let's give that also a number equation number seven okay next step is substitute this equation number three in equation number five I mean the reverse of course the equation number five and equation number three and you will get this now you will get kmf times this expression which is this now let's call this equation number eight now if i move on and say assuming just using this note that the td disturbance torque is zero we can write that tm is equal to tl and i can then say tm is this which is the equation number eight and tl is this equation number seven so left and right hand side are shown here then i can develop a transfer function which says the output as the load displacement so load angular displacement and input is the field voltage and this is the expression i have here which is a third order system three poles this will be our equation number nine now we can do several things for this expression because i can also write it down such that i can see the time constant easily so i will divide the numerator first by bl so i have then jl bl and also divide this by rf so i have also lf over rf now this is a nice expression let's call this also another equation number 10 and what we here have is the following we have a tau l 
and tau f. Tau l is called the mechanical time constant, which is due to the load. And we have also tau f, which is the field current time constant also. And that is the electrical time constant because that's due to the electrical components. So this is due to the mechanical components. This is due to the electrical components. So we have two time constants and also a polar origin. Okay, in most cases, that is actually 99% uh, of, of the time, you can say that the time constant of the electrical part is much, much smaller than the part for the mechanical system. Because the LF is quite small, so we can just ignore then the tau F and then this transfer function will be much simpler. If you take it, of course, into account, you will get more exact values, but this is most of the time not needed, that complexity. So we can say, then we can approximate this expression for the field current control as this. So I will just remove this part and I have only this denominator over S times one plus tau LS. Again, tau L is still um, uh, JL over BL. Okay. Okay, now moving on and still moving on with this field current control. Let's also develop a block diagram for this specific case. So without any, of course, control outside this system, just the DC motor itself having a field current control internally. Now we know this is the transfer function without any approximation. So without any approximation of the time constant by the electrical domain. If I rewrite this, I can say the theta L is equal to this complete expression times the field voltage. What does it mean actually? We have several parameters or several steps here. Now, first thing is I can say 1 over BL plus JLS, this part. If I multiply that with my field voltage, I know, because this is the complete impedance, 1 over that complete impedance times the field or the field voltage over the impedance will produce the current, that is the field current. So that's actually shown here. So the input voltage over that impedance, because that's one over that impedance, will produce that field current. Now the field current times the constant KMF will produce the torque, the motor torque. We have seen that. Now assuming again the disturbance is zero, we can say the motor torque is equal to the load torque. Now the load torque itself is by or caused by the friction and also the moment of inertia of this load. So together we have then uh, everything here and so we have Vf 1 over s because of that uh, pole at the origin and we have actually all these separate parts in this block diagram. So from the input all the way to the output. So we can also develop in this form, your own block diagram for a specific transfer function and then give the separate blocks as shown here. So with angular velocity, one over S, so times the angular velocity will make the angular displacement. Okay, now let's move on and now talk about the armature current control DC motor. Now armature current control DC motor will have a constant field current as discussed before. Now that will be then this torque equation. So now we have the IA as the parameter that is already in Laplace transform. And this is where we actually have determined that. This is the time domain representation, also the constant. Now, if I look again in a similar form as we did for the field circuit to the armature circuit to the voltage current relationship using Kirchhoff voltage law. We see this expression, we see the VA, applied voltage here, is equal to the voltage across the resistor, plus the voltage across the inductor, plus the induced voltage or the back EMF, which is then this given by this VB in pink color. I know, again, we know that the 
uh, the inductor will have this expression for its voltage. So the inductance times the time derivative of the inductor current. Now, if I again use Laplace transform and assuming initial conditions are zero, I will have this expression. Now see again, the first derivative uh, becomes an S and the rest just change from T to S. Now you can simplify it or rewrite it in this form and then number this as an equation number 14 already. Now the back EMF has also an expression which is a constant KB times the time derivative, first time derivative of the motor angular displacement here. Or you can say it is the KB times the angular speed or angular velocity. Now if I also use Laplace transform on this expression, I get KB times S times the theta m as a function of s. Okay, this is equation number 15. Now if I now substitute 15 in 14 in this one, so I will get this expression. So I will get Va is equal to Ra plus Las quantity times the current of the armature plus the expression for the back EMF. Okay, now moving on and then now rewrite this such that the armature current is expressed in the rest of the parameters and that is shown here. So I will actually do the VA minus this part and over this impedance of the armature circuit. Okay, now we have another expression. Next step is actually looking again to the torque balance that's still the same. So the motor torque is equal to load torque plus the TD and again I can uh, mention the same Note that the disturbance torque, torque is most of the time very small, only in special cases must be considered. Now, low torque again, the same expression, so I will give you directly the Laplace transform of it, and this is our equation number 19. Now, let's collect the equations we need to move on. Now, we will now substitute equation number 17, this one, in here, because that's the current equation goes in here and you will get this expression. So KMA times the expression for the current for the armature current. Now, next we assume again that the TD is zero. So we can say TM is equal to TL. So the motor torque is equal to the load torque. This is the motor torque. And the load torque is shown here. So we will actually equate equation number 19 and 20. That's actually shown here. Now moving on. We can say left and right hand side multiplied by Ra plus Las. That will give you this expression. And if I move on by rewriting this, so I will work out actually the parentheses here, I will get this expression. You can see, for example, the left side is just Kma, just a constant time the uh, applied voltage between these two nodes of the armature cir circuit. And we have here a lot of parameters where you have the resistor and the inductance and also the friction uh, the friction coefficient and the rest of the parameters what you also see is the omega i mean the theta l and also theta m but those are exact same in this specifically case because we assume that the rotor is stiff so there is no other parameters we need to consider like uh, spring constant etc or any other damping if that's of course the case, you need to consider that and then uh, theta L will not be equal to theta M because that will be more complicated. So I will just assume that this is stiff. So we have no other issues to consider. Then we have this expression. So everything can then be transformed to theta L or theta M. So I will just use theta L and then collect the terms. You will get this uh, complete coefficient in front of this theta L. Now we can again set up the transfer function where we have a theta L as the output and the VA as our input. That's actually shown here. And if I worked out, I will get this expression. So again, a constant over some expression, which is a third order polynomial. And this will be then our third order system. And this is our transfer function for the armature current control DC motor. Okay. Let's move on and also develop the diagram specifically for this situation now this was this can be also done so you can also say i will divide the 
numerator and denominator first by BL and also by RF, what's happening? Now, you will divide in the, this by the product of these two and also this one. So we'll get this. And you can again recognize here the time constants TL, again the mechanical time constant, and also the TA, which is then electrical time constant, and specific now about the LA and the RA, which is then the armature uh, circuit parameters. Again, in most cases, that is also true that the, this tau L, which is the mechanical time constant, is much, much larger than tau A, so because this is also much smaller. So we can again ignore that and then we can then approximate GA. Now GA, specifically the armature transfer function, will be then this. So this is a third order system, can be approximated to a second order system, of course, much, much easier to work with and also to analy analyze. And we have this expression. Okay, that will be the equation number 25. Okay, moving on, collecting these uh, equations again because we need to move on and also can be simplified even further because we can also say this one and this last term here KMA KB over BL RA can be taken also together and you will have this expression where the tau one is now expressed as this expression so tau one is equal to this now you have actually a second order system and also the specifically the tau given. So there's one pole at the origin, the other pole is at the inverse of this. So one over the tau one is another pole, of course the minus one of that. Okay. Now moving on and looking at the armature current control specifically and also the diagram. So how can we develop this? Because that's specifically for the armature current control. Now, we need to do a little bit more work here, but it is not that difficult. Let's start with the torque. Now, we have the torque here. You see the Km times the difference between the input voltage and also the back EMF over that impedance was a torque. So I can say this voltage, input voltage, minus back EMF, something coming here, over that armature, impedance must produce a current this was the current the armature current times the constant will produce then the motor torque that's actually what you have seen here again assuming the disturbance torque is zero now again the motor torque will be then the load torque and the load torque will be then uh, developed by the friction and also the moment inertia of your load Everything is then actually shown here, so you can also see that here. So the theta L up to the all the way to the output is actually equal to this. So the load torque over S and over this parameter, which is actually shown as one over S and also one over BL plus JLS. So that everything is actually here. And which also see is we don't, uh, let's say, feed back all the way from the output, but from the velocity part because that is mandatory because you have an S times the omega M or omega L. And that is actually the velocity or the angular velocity of that motor or your load. Because the rotor is now stiff here, so we can just assume they are equal. So don't rem uh, remember, don't make the mistake that this is not from the output, but from the velocity part. And that's why we have an integrated part here to make that transition from the angular velocity to angular displacement. Okay. Let's also talk briefly about the relation between the torque constant Km or Kma and Kmf specifically for the armature and the field control parts and also the back EMF constant Kb because this is most of the time not really well understood and people think that those are two different things that could be the case of course in the specific cases but let's discuss this but torque constant Km and also the back EMF constant Kb are in fact true two separate parameters but they are closely related to each other. Let's see that in the um, power balance at steady state condition. Now, in that case, the input power to the rotor, what we apply, will be then the power delivered to the motor shaft. So those must be equal to each other in the steady state condition. So we can say P in is equal to P out. So the input power from the rotor is equal to the 
shaft power, so that it delivered to the shaft. Now the input power to the rotor can be also given by this expression. So the KB, again, that is the constant from the back EMF, times the rotation speed. So this is just the voltage actually, back EMF voltage. So voltage times the current, so it's just V, uh, v times the I. So voltage times the current is the uh, power, so it's actually shown here. So the armature current times the developed or induced voltage there. You can also write it out as in this form. So you can say the IA, which is the armature current, is also equal to the motor torque over the KM, which is then the motor time constant, the uh, to torque constant, I mean. Now the power delivered to the motor shaft, the P out, is then that motor torque times the speed of that rotation of the rotor. Okay, so we have now two equations for a P in and P out. Those must be equal to each other at steady state. Now we have then this expression also because a Tm was Km times the armature current. Okay, then we can write the following. We can say this expression, or this expression, doesn't matter, is equal to that expression. Now I lose the omega m's. You can see the left and right inside. I also lose the armature currents. And I will get Kb is equal to Km. Now that's a surprise maybe, but that is. Those are equal to each other, but there is a condition that's only in, uh, are equal to each other if I use this unit. So Kb must be given as volts over radians per second, and the Km must be given as newton meters over the amperes. If that is not the case, I cannot make that, let's say, the equation of Kb is equal to just Km. So they are equal in value, but they have, of course, a different unit because we're talking also about different things, but it can be only when you have these two units left and right inside. So be careful about that. Just a briefly discussion about the Km and the Kb. So I will assume that also in this discussion, and it will also simplify the analysis. So let's have a summary of everything what we have discussed so far. The separately excited DC motor model we have discussed, and we have then seen two, let's say, control mechanisms. First one was the field control, field current control, where, where we have the constant armature current. And the other one was the armature current control, where you have the field current constant. Now this was a transfer function for the field current control. And we also re uh, have uh, given that in this form, and also uh, using a time constant, and also made the simplification, and then produced this result for a transfer function. Okay. Now, for the armature current control, these were the results. Again, a time constant. Assuming again this, and we'll have this expression. So you can see the original transfer functions are all third order, but simplified form will produce you a second order uh, transfer function for both cases. Okay, that's fine for now. And we have now actually also discussed the summary for this case but we know that kb is km so why not use that also here so because we have kmf kma a lot of stuff here so it can be maybe simplified and also read uh, in a bit better readable form because i have a kb times kma that can be then of course kb squared now let's do that and then see actually what's happening so there are things changing here and then this is then the r final form assuming that these are of course exactly each other having this correct units as discussed before okay now moving on to the part two which is the controller design now first let's talk about the position control this is a very generic diagram of the position control the first part is actually shown here that there is a knob here so we just turn this knob we give, let's say, 10 degrees, 20 degrees as the command. And that goes actually to a potentiometer. So it will actually transform this angle to a voltage because there's a battery here, which will then produce a volt, depending, of course, on this location or the position of this arrow. Now that will go to a voltage amplifier. This is also called a differential amplifier. 
and then produce the voltage to the DC motor and this error is actually due to that output potentiometer also. So there is also potentiometer the output which will also measure the angular displacement and also produces a voltage and get back here. So we have the input as the radiance transforms back in voltage get from the feedback also voltage so voltage minus the voltage will produce of course voltage here you apply a voltage for your DC motor that goes to the load and produce this actually there's a very simple uh, configuration of the position control now if I make this a little bit better or more simplified in the block diagram we have the theta r which is our reference let's say um, uh, radiance or reference rotation direction there's a input potentiometer so there will be a translation from radiance to voltage so the p1 is the scaling now we have also scaling from the output omega theta l i mean and that will also go through a let's say a transducer the potentiometer and also scaling that those can be of course exact same if you have exact same potentiometer now we have the voltage here minus this voltage from feedback and we have an error voltage that can be then multiplied by a constant so that is just a voltage amplifier or a differential voltage amplifier now this voltage u is then specific enough for this case uh, for the field controlled uh, dc motor is then our field voltage and that will be then together with the load apply and then produce the rotation at the output so this was our transfer function that is actually this one and the closed loop transfer function now using mason's gain rule we know from control systems is the closed loop transfer function for this block diagram is the following the forward path so the k times the gf over one plus the loop transfer function times everything which you have in front so actually it is shown here so k times the let's say our dc motor plus the load over one plus the p2 times k times again our dc motor and load it is one plus because there's a minus sign it was a plus for example then it must be a one minus and then the whole whole thing must be multiplied by p1 that's just the constant in front of it so you can see here the input is the theta r reference the output is the theta l the uh, angular displacement at the load now if you let's say insert the values here also substitute the gf expression also the tau l actually as a jl over bl you will get this expression which you see is a second order system indeed we have two poles and depending on the values of this let's say the k k is actually here uh, let's just a number just constant so you can also call this a proportional controller and if i substitute everything here for rf etc etc i will get a numerical value of these parameters and i can then also plot let's say the step response or whatever you want to see and also see what kind of a performance you have that's what we will do in the third step okay now let's also discuss about the position control exact same configuration but then specifically now for the uh, armature controlled uh, armature current controlled system exact same actually but now specifically the close to transfer function specifically for this that will produce you actually this one so again the same formula which is called the mason's gain rule so you go actually again forward over one plus the loop times the p1 again and then you get this second order transfer function okay now moving on the second one which is the velocity control also very really important this is also a generic uh, diagram again we have the dc motor with the load but in front of it again an error amplifier or a differential amplifier which will amplify the error this is our input potentiometer which will then set our desired velocity or desired speed again using some potentiometer of course connected to a DC voltage there's also scaling here again from a position or the speed which you want to a voltage now you will also have a voltage at the output because you cannot say I will do voltage minus the speed so it must be of course at the same unit so in order to transform the speed of the output of the load 
you can use a tachometer so uh, that will then change the speed to a voltage so this tachometer has a kt as the scaling so that will for example make from some rotation speed a voltage scaling this is just a constant can be also some dynamic operation but let's assume it's a constant that will be then again multiplied by this error will be then multiplied here by this k which is the voltage amplifier uh, gain and that will be then producing here the input voltage for our transfer function but now we need to be careful because we assumed for our transfer function assuming of course field current control that the output was omega i mean theta l now it's omega l so we need to adapt or change our transfer function from gf to s times gf because we need to move on to the velocity so that's actually what you see here so it is motor load pro plus uh, actually multiplied actually with a differentiator so this what you had is now omega l over so not anymore theta l over the uh, the, f uh, the field voltage now that the expression is actually and, uh, even more simple so we got actually from a second or a, th a first order system again the same time constant and the close-up transfer function will be then this and this is now also a sec first order system so you get again a uh, uh, let's say a first order system this is by the way tf not a ta so by changing actually the output as the speed you will change your transfer function from a second order to first order and also this closer to transfer function the same now let's do look also the same configuration but then for the armature current control specifically exact same again the same reasoning you need to multiply here by s and this is the transfer function you will have so again omega l over the va you will lose of course the integrate because of that differentiation and this is then the closer transfer function now for this case again you see it is just one pole so it is a first order system all right this is then for the discussion how we can do the control you for the position and also for the velocity using two different control of the current of the motor all right next step is the simulation in matlab so let's see what's happening in matlab all right now we will move on with the simulation we have discussed the dc motor modeling and also how we can control it i have now prepared a script to discuss the let's say the performance of these two models using the armature circuit and also the field circuit control for rdc motor so we have for example for the field circuit the rf is 0 0.2 ohms lf is 0 0.01 henrys and similarly different values for the armature circuit also I also have chosen that the KB is just 600 volts per radians per second for the back EMF constant. For the load, I have chosen the motor energy as 200 and also BL as 400, the coefficient for the damping. Now for the DC motor transfer functions, I have of course the, let's say the field current control DC uh, model, DC motor model. So let me also type in here DC motor model that's also uh, for the armature current dc motor model so that's also important that's all what we have discussed so i have just uh, typed it in my script i have also chosen a controller gain here so just a random value at this moment just five or we'll discuss uh, shortly what's happening if i just change this i've also chosen for the p1 and p2 which were our potentiometer scaling factors this is uh, just a 0.04 and then also the transfer functions the complete close to transfer function for position control when you have the field current controlled and you have also again the armature current controlled for the position uh, control system similarly for the velocity control and for the field control system and also the armature control the current control system so what we can do is we can run this script so that is now running and i will now uh, run this script so we will get actually the, the let's say everything is uh, uploaded what we can do we can uh, open up an uh, application in matlab 
that will allow us to see what's happening with the let's say the uh, responses for the step etc or you can do uh, that's actually easier you can say okay i will just want to see what's happening with step response for this case specifically for case five for the position control of the field current controlled mode so field current control mode of our dc motor and i would like to have the um, the position feedback position control now let's do that i can do step and then type in tf position and then do grid on and if you do grid on you will get then this response here we go this response for our field current controlled situation where you only look at the position okay now if i do here the let's say the right mouse click and see the over to approximately 13 40 percent steady state uh, value is one why because we have a polar origin so there is no steady state error so those are all fine and also the setting times approximately 3.4 uh, seconds okay that's just an information from the step response but more information you can gain by looking at the control system designer so i will open up this it will take some time and then see what's happening if i just change And if I look at this, uh, let's say application of the MATLAB, I will have more freedom. I can do a lot of stuff and also see directly what's happening simultaneously. So I don't need this part, so I will just uh, remove it, collapse this part if possible. We also don't use a body plot, so I will close also the body plot. I only want the root locus, so let's see the location of the poles and the zeros. And also the unit step response business. So let me make this large. Okay. What we need to do is we need to choose an architecture and also import our model. So let's first do this. Now we have several configurations here. So you can see actually here this is the this one and also this configuration of also let's say multiple input uh, kind of uh, or mul multiple uh, feedback or two degrees of control. We've also discussed it in separate videos in this channel, you can see that. So we have actually this one. So we have so sort of the potentiometer here and another potentiometer for the output and also controller here. And there's also this G, which is our model for the motor. Now you can type in here uh, what you have, or you can upload this. So you can also say, I will go to F, which is P1. You can go here, type, uh, click on this one and look at what is all here so we can see the p1 i thought it was actually here but of course it's not a function so it must be inserted so we can just say uh, for this one is just 0 0.04 that's actually also for the h so it's also 0 0.04 now what you also have is this g which is our system so that was all that was of course imported so we can see it here gf and ga is for the armature current controlled motor model so we can also type just gf and then enter the c is the controller here so in this case we have of course chosen k but now for this uh, application it is a parameter we can just vary so we let's Keep it as it is so it is uh, nothing at the moment and we will now run this with okay so it is running here to update the architecture and we'll get some response okay now what you see here is if i now zoom in this part because that is where the let's say the most of the action here so this is a, these are the two poles which are dominating the other pole is approximately at the minus 20 so that's not really actually doing much at the moment so uh, I can zoom in this part. So let me give him some more time. So I will just zoom in this part. So this is actually what it is. And if I now 
grab this, let's say the pink dots, I can see directly what's happening with my unit step response. So at the moment, it has no overshoot. It is kind of, okay, it's not that slow, but it's also not really uh, fast. So I can speed it up by bringing this together. Just grab this and then bring it together. You can see it's actually speeding up. Still no overshoot because the zeta is actually larger than one, the damping ratio. So I'm coming together, so it's kind of approaching the overdamp system. If I just approximate this by a second order system, I will have then this. Now, it is still no overshoot because it's not a pure second order system. Now I will get this one. So you can see some overshoot. So we, let's do that. Let's check how much overshoot we get. Approximately 4%. And also, you can see also the setting time is approximately, let's say, 4.5 uh, seconds. Now, there are, of course, no uh, specifications for this uh, video. So we can also say, okay, what is it what we are heading we are actually heading to let's say a nice response so we can say can we decrease this and also increase the setting time altogether let's see just trial and error just we go move up and okay i can see the overshoot is not really doing what i want so of course the setting time is going down but the overshoot is going up so maybe i have to go back and then do it this way and I can see it is not really helpful to go up actually. And this is now, in this case, 4.6 seconds. And this is almost, let's say, 3%. But I can do, I think, a little bit better. I go down. And in this form, I have sort of a nice response. 3 seconds approximately for setting time. And then 1.5 for the overshoot as a percentage. Still, you can see that steady state error is still one it means i have no steady state error so the steady state value is one so for unit step input for the position control this has no error okay that's for having the let's say the field current controlled dc motor model what i now can do is of course i can move on move on move on and make it even worse so maybe that's also handy to see so now i get 53 percent if I now do full, um, let's say a few, I can also go all the way to the right hand side of the complex plane and I will make it unstable. unstable. So it's of course not what we want, but you can see what's what's actually happening if I just move my poles to, the, to some location by actually grabbing it. So you can also say, okay, how much is the gain now? Because you don't know that. So what you can do is, for example, you want this, this is for you 5.33% of the overshoot and also this 4.5 seconds for the um, uh, for your setting time. You can just export your this current uh, value of the C. So you want to export this. You can, of course, export it also, let's say, a specific name. And if you export, if I now go to here, let me uh, do that. And if I now type here C, capital letter C, I will get the specific value of 10.7 approximately for this situation. So if I go down and again export, I will overwrite this and you get the new uh, value for your C. Let's move on and then continue with the another model, which is then the, uh, the armature current model. Now I can just now do it in different ways so I can upload that. Or import this using this. The rest are exact same, so I haven't named, I haven't changed anything. It's still 0 0.04 for the F and the uh, H for the potentiometers. The C will change, so I will change and I will again export that a new value. Of course, this will be a different system, so you can see also the poles are actually already here. Two poles are already actually complex. Uh, uh, we have complex uh, pole pairs actually here. So if I now zoom in again here, because a lot of action is here. So let's zoom in here, this part. So you can see they are here. And if I now go with my poles to the right hand side in this form, I can see what's happening with my overshoot. And also with my setting time. Now, there is not much happening because it's quite horizontal. And if I do this, of course, I get now some ringing and some uh, nasty stuff, but it's still okay. If I look at actually here, so it's almost 2.5% and also 
four seconds and this is actually doing much much better work actually if i look only uh, the step response so that is also one of the uh, let's say parameters to choose which one you want to control this is for the armature uh, current control so the field current here is steady or constant so if i move closer to the uh, right hand side you can see now the response is getting more nasty and i can make it even more nasty by going to the right hand side and it will be of course out of control and now i have an unstable system okay this is now the two uh, examples illustrations for the position control now we do also for the velocity control now i keep everything the same what i need of course is uh, let me start with the field current control model of the, mo uh, of the motor this one but i will of course have to do also s times this so instead of doing this you can also better type s times g f that is uh, faster and the rest is the exact same so you haven't changed that now you get the velocity feedback velocity control i mean so now we have of course uh, one uh, let's say pole the origin and it doesn't mean that your steady state error is always zero so let's see what's happening so let me do full screen full view and the poles are here so i will go down down so this is actually what you have now let me also look at the overshoot and the setting time the overshoot over is enormous so it is uh, almost 100 percent let me go down even more with my poles so that's actually what you have here and this is then the 55 percent approximately and now we have 0 0.34 Four approximately so still the steady state error is zero for this situation also so there is an well, approximately not that because i have to be actually of course careful by looking at it so why is it not exactly zero so why is this not final value one because you look now actually at the uh, second order system and there is no pole anymore at the origin so we have actually sort of changed the system by looking at a different input or actually different output now I can of course uh, decrease the overshoot again lowering this etc and you can see what's happening with your overshoot so now it's approximately 12 percent and then 0 0.3 so again there's no specification just playing around and see what's happening and I can also do that for the other one again s times ga why otherwise I don't have that specific transfer function for my um, for the output as the angular velocity of course the rest is the same so this is now for the constant field current let me do also again see what's happening okay um let me grab this and place it to the right hand side sometimes it's not really responding fast so this is this now i can already see we have two poles already at the complex conjugate place so it is is that if i move up it's getting even worse so the best case i can have for this case situation just by p control is actually having them on the original location of the poles and i already have 87 percent overshoot and yeah, my setting time is approximately 0 0.2 so it's quite yeah kind of nasty overshoot here so this control for this situation is definitely not the best option of course i only looked at the p control so if you do more complex pi pid or any other you will for sure can reduce this and get much nicer uh, response at the output all right this is just another discussion how you can uh, model the dc motor using two different uh, let's say configurations the armature current control and also the field control if you have discussed before that how we can develop the equations of the DC motor uh, and also from there the transfer functions for specific situation then we have seen how we can do the position and the velocity control for these two uh, configurations and now we have also played around in MATLAB to see what's happening and what kind of a response you can get and you can see actually in the velocity control and this specific using this of course specific parameters 
the armature current control system is not doing that much uh, good so the field co current control is actually better but in the position control system or the, i mean the uh, yeah it's the for the position control the uh, armature current system configuration of the dc motor was uh, actually much better all right this is done for this example lengthy example about the dc motor modeling and also the control using the matlab simulations if you have any questions comments uh, please let me know and i will try to answer them as soon as possible see you next time another interesting video take care